Well, I guess let's get into the review, roast, dragging, life lessons. Uh, <laughs> uh, Chasing Dallas, season two, um, reunion, part one. There's more parts. All right, let's get into it. Just off rip, just forgive me. I'm tired as fuck. I'm just getting off work. Um, I told myself that I was going to watch the reunion over again while I was at work. But after realizing that it was an hour and a half long, um, hell to the no. <laughs> um, ultimately, you know, reunions are just regurgitating the things that have taken place throughout the season. So really, I don't really need any notes. And, you know, we, we really didn't even get much of anything. There was no, you know, resolutions made. There was no common grounds met at all. Um, usually reunions provide some type of clarity um, to the major situations. Um, and they did get to the major situations. I appreciate that. But through all the talking over each other and, and disrespecting the host, Imani Van Zapp, um, and the, the girls were still in their feelings, obviously, over situations that took place eons ago, bitch. Um, it was kind of hard to find that footing. Um, I don't know if that was purposefully so they can have more parts to the reunion. Um, but in, hour, in an hour and a half, I think it could have been possible to hash out, talk about, you know, if we were moving swiftly and professionally, hello God, um, I don't think we would need more parts to the reunion. Um, but because we stayed on certain topics longer than others, we found ourselves um, with Dorothy and Toto, um, the Scarecrow, we had to go get the Tin Man Girl, um, that weak ass lion bitch, and we had to go through the, we had to follow the yellow brick road um, because, 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 because of the wonderful things he does. Um, we get met by a witch um, and her flying monkeys, honey, and it just doesn't go well. All to realize it only took a little bit of water to defeat the witch. She is now melting. Um, I found that hilarious. Um, as I was saying, <laughs> because that's what this was. This was a journey of nonsense. Faggotry, as El Teddy would say. And, you know, I, I, um, we went a whole hour and 30 minutes and we didn't even, so, you're, so we're, are we still going to sit here and absolve Trey Womack and act as if like he's a valid cast member? of the Chasing Reality brand? Is that what we gonna do? We're gonna sit back and really not ask, the, beg the question, girl, what did you do this season? Or what were you supposed to do? What did you tell the girls that you were gonna do? Besides um, trade off di different hair pieces throughout the episodes. That's the only magic trick he possess, uh, Trey Womack possesses. Bibbidi bobbidi boo, and bitch, it's the new piece. And I know that I have been having my foot on Trey Womack's neck this whole season, but it's for a reason. And the real motherfuckers will be able to recognize why. And I've explained myself throughout all of my reviews on why I feel this way. You came to the show on false pretenses. You more than likely tried to use Reese for a place on the show. Um, but we know as Reese's being as gullible as she is, child, um, she's willing to let it happen because she's looking for real love. And it ain't nothing wrong with that. Um, you can't control the disguises these girls are out here wearing because we know that Trey Womack is a master of disguise, honey. Yes, God, honey. Girl, one day she's bald, honey. One day she has hair. One day she has blonde hair, honey. One day she's out here serving Black Panther Killmonger teas, girl. Like, she's out here just serving the girls different looks. 
Maybe she does work for the CIA. Maybe she's the one secretly recording the girls. La Femme Nikita style, bitch. Okay? We don't know what James Bond looked like. We don't know what she's looking like, girl. Anyway, I'm not going to stay on her too long. I just found it really funny <clears throat> that this girl... And, and then she's so shady throughout the entire thing, like doing her little faces. And what, what's the beef with you and Carrie D, honey? What's the beef with you and Markel? There seemed like a little bit of leftover shade for George as well. Thought y'all were cooking together, honey. You know what I'm saying? It, it just really seems... I, I don't know. If the, I, I'm kind of glad this is YouTube because if this was a major platform, a major platform where the girls were actually getting paid, had budgets and things of that nature, what would happen is there would be a dragging. They... You are. There would be an open season on Trey Womack in his in, in the nothingness that he brought to the show. The fraudulence. We're just gonna act like, girl. Okay. All right. I guess. I would have expected this in Atlanta. I didn't expect this in Texas. We're just really gonna, and I know I'm staying on this, but I really, the viewers, everybody, really think about this for a second. You let someone on this platform. Who has nothing to offer. But the realization that she's missing a lot of leg days. <laughs> and potential whorish behavior by jumping in everybody's DMs. And, and then saving DMs, which further proves the messy bottom behavior that lives within you. I'm just saying, though, and some people say I go too hard on, on Trey, and I be wanting to love me some Trey Womack, honey, because there is a spark of something in there that I do like, but it's just like, it's it's just so, like, it's mudded in the in, in the fuckery, and I just can't. I, I can't. I stand for truth and justice, and I have to call it how I see it, and it's and, and even all my shades sometimes. Most of this shit is just for entertainment, but girl, you got to get your shit together, honey. You gotta get that's that should have been one of the main questions Imani Van Zapp should have asked. That's how you fix someone's life by ma by making them come to the fucking altar, okay, and realize the error of their ways. Amen. That's how you fix somebody's shit by making them realize that girl, you're just a whole fraud. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Who's the most fraudulent bitch of them all? You are Trey Womack, bitch. It's the truth though. I'm a, I'm done with Trey Womack. I'm sorry, y'all. Let me get back to it. Let's discuss the fashions real quick. Um, Ariel O'Hare was best dressed, hands down. After her is definitely Markel Logan. Markel slayed the girls. Um, Carrie D was dressed very cute and simple. When I saw the promo ad, um, the promo the clip for the reunion, I thought Carrie D, D hair was cute. But that close up, I don't know. Carrie D, you're too young to have thinning hair, girl. Um, I love you down. I love you down. But... We gotta try something. I don't. You know what? You like it. I love it, girl. It is what it is. Um, but y'all was uh, y'all three took it for me. Um, I did see a Thundercat. I did see a VR Trooper, and I definitely saw the White Power Ranger. I definitely, definitely did. And the Thundercat was um, King Kane because I don't know what the fuck that was. Um, it looked as if. There was pieces of, because we know you repurpose clothing, so there was like probably pieces of trash bag, there was pieces of of, of a jogging suit maybe, um, one of those sweatsuits, there was a piece of a great, 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 great grandmother's a wedding dress that you made some sleeves with, um, the shoes looked like they came out of, um, what is that John Travolta movie, girl, with the disco ball and all that shit? I forgot it, honey, but it's just like, girl, let's dance. <laughs> Come on, Donna Summers, honey. Like, I don't know what you were doing, girl, but whatever. These girls be claiming to be fashion people, girl. Reese G, what? Go, go, Power Rangers. Mighty Morphin. Go, go, Power Rangers. What the fuck was that? Like, girl. Ground control to miss, I forget the Houston or whatever the fuck that song is called, honey. That intergalactic song, girl. Like, I just felt, beam me up, Scotty. Like, girl, what the fuck? Dior, we seen that at the lingerie party. I don't know what you came there trying to, you know, have a fun moment with the outfit, but we've seen y'all have way better fucking confessional looks and episode looks. 
I don't know what the fuck y'all were thinking. Reese, what the fuck were you thinking? Girl, is this, uh, girl, whatever. Um, Trey Howard, I, I did like the outfit, but I do feel like it was a little much. Um, again, we have seen you girls serve on Instagram. We have seen y'all girls serve through these episodes and these green screens. But when it comes to the reunions, and it's not just y'all's platform, it's a lot of the other platforms. It's just, it's, girl, I don't want to hear the excuse of Corona came through. Because y'all got something in them wardrobes, girl. Y'all got something in y'all wardrobes. Reese, did you look like she took a trip to the past and found her five-year-old self and, and, and just went on ahead and tried to, to fit back in to her very first Halloween costume or pajama party or whatever that is. Anyway, um, Markel, Ariel O'Hara, and Carrie D served for me. George, um, I, I don't know what that was either. I love you, George. You know I do. But I just, I feel like we could have done a lot better. I've seen y'all do better. So I just don't know, like, mm -mm, y'all knew this wasn't a last minute deal. I don't get it, but anyway, um, where do we go from here? <laughs> All right, let's talk about the host, Imani Van Zapp, honey, uh, professional shit fixer, here to make the girl stronger and better, okay? Okay, hold on, let me do that justice. Stronger and better, okay? Um, she was dressed really cute, um, very office therapeutic fish, coming through to fix some shit. And unfortunately, when you have the Thundercats, the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, and the VR Troopers battling it the fuck out, it is really hard to gain control over the fucking stage. Um, this is what happens when there's, uh, there's no class in the building. This is what happens when there's no self-respect in the building. Amen. <clears throat> but when the girls come dressed like that, we obviously realize there is no self-respect there. <laughs> There's no self-respect there. I felt like I was going to bust out into a seizure. There were so many different things going on on that stage. Jesus Christ. A red background. Someone's wearing pink. Because that's we can't even name that someone. We know who the only bitch there was wearing pink. Or fuchsia with, with, with shorts. And then black shoes with a red color. <coughs> <coughs> The spirit of Trey Wallback is trying to choke the life out of me. Let me shut the fuck up about that bitch because the spirit is trying to trap me, girl. But yeah, girl, it's just, it's just uh, anyway, it is hard. I know a lot of people try to come down on Amanda because she couldn't really regain this, the situation, but it's just like, girl, you're talking about someone like that's loudmouth like King Kane. Howard is definitely going to get his point across, girl. And then you have high ass Reese G, or should we just say the White Power Ranger? Um, she was high as a motherfucker. And the energy that I have felt from Reese since the end, clo the close of this season, it's been as if she is lost, as if she is at a standstill with her life and her decision making skills at this moment. Um, I felt like, okay, maybe after the break, things will be good. We are here at the reunion. Um, and that energy I still sense from Reese. And let me just say this. No matter people's views, no matter public opinion, you have a dream. You made it come to life. As much as I have dragged, as much as I have, have gave a, a, a real in-depth perspective on this show, um, I don't ever want anyone to stop their dreams. And I have heard over and over again from Reese that she, he, he does not want to come back for a season three. And you know what? Let me tell you something. I agree with that shit. If you're not prepared to do it right. But if you're prepared to do it the right way, then I want you to come back. And sometimes in the entertainment world, when you're a writer, creator, um, producer, things of that nature, you can burn out really quickly. And sometimes you just need to take a step back and evaluate. Because again, every process you go through, whether it's career, whether it's just life period, is that everything's a process. This could just be one of those processes where you just gonna have to learn from this shit, girl. Don't let nobody make you feel bad or down to the point where you don't wanna continue to try to bring your dream to fruition. Not everybody gets it right all the time. 
okay? Eventually, the formula, the formula will be per perfected and you'll be able to, um, to serve the girls. And <clears throat> anyway, um, can we talk about some situations? Um, well, I guess, hold on. We're not talking about this fight again. Fuck that shit. Um, I no longer, I don't care about the whole Reese making up with people and all this kind of stuff. So we need to stop trying to force friendships. Okay, we may have been friends for a while. We may have had good conversations. But we have to realize that it takes not only just one, but two to tangle in situations. So, and if y'all can't be friends privately, let alone publicly, maybe it's just not meant to be. Sometimes we be trying to hold on to things that God has been trying to tear up out of our lives. No tea, no shade, just real motherfucking life lesson shit. Okay? We be trying to hold on to people just because we had a good moment or two with them. Okay? Just because they know things about us or whatever the case. You know what I'm saying? Because sometimes it be like that. We're just so in tune with these people. But at the end of the day, if they're just this toxic energy, or not even just that though, it's just not meant to fucking be. You could be two wonderful people, but you just don't mesh well. I see the hurt on both sides, but in this situation, I don't know. I, I, I'm, I believe Markel in a lot of situation. And since we're talking about believing people, um, the explanation that Dior gave throughout this whole thing, I'm on Dior's side. I believe him. I'm on Dior and Howard's side. Now, the people are coming down on Howard. Let me be real. Howard is young, and I know I use it as his defense all the time, but it is the truth. Howard is young, and he's emotional, Okay. His response to thing is going to be totally different than Dior, who has experienced, lived this life, been through some shit child, overcame some shit, and has a little bit of wisdom and a little bit of resolve about himself, okay? I don't expect... <laughs> of course, Howard's going to cuss out Risa G. But Risa G, you're much older too, experienced. You should know how to have better resolve. But when your energy's fucked up and you have a motherfucker and you have the spirit of the White Power Ranger living within you, I guess you just want to come back with the girls. I was very disappointed with the lack of professionalism from Risa G. Um, you were on that stage representing yourself as a cast member and as an executive producer. You did not have much to say. The looks you gave were very much like, I am bothered. Bothered, not I'm bothered, like you were very bothered. And you did not want to be there. And I felt as if, if you don't want to be there, you shouldn't have been. Um, Dior read you for filth. Um, George was reading the shit out of King Kane. King Kane did kind of try to comfort Howard. A bunch, again, faggotry. Um, nothing here was accomplished. Um, they're talking about a season, uh, episode, um, um, part two, maybe a part three. Um, girl, please. If you ain't prepared to give me some conflict resolution, girl, or at least some kind of in-depth, because let me tell y'all something, y'all forget. The Just Us League, we are aware of a lot of the inner workings of a lot of this fuckery. On this one alone, we caught y'all in some foul shit. But because we're good people, hallelujah, because we're good people and you've trusted us with your truths, we're not going to go ahead, we're not going to break that barrier down. Because I wanted to say some stuff. I wanted to say some stuff, but I'm not. I'm not that kind of bitch. And I've watched almost all the Just Us League's uh, videos too, and they're obviously not those kind of people either. That's why we fuck with each other, okay? Um, and that's why, um, anyway, I don't really have nothing else to say. I, I really don't. Um, drop that in the comments. Let me know what the hell y'all thought about this. I don't really know if this was a review. I, I just, you know me, I asked myself, could I even review it? I didn't, my husband Wuda's commercial played again for his new show, Zell and Wuda. Yes, God, honey, I still need to find out who made my husband cry. Because, bitch, we're not, we're not, you know what, this isn't here, we're not here for that right now. I'll find out, I'll find out who made my husband cry, child. I'm just going to make some phone calls, okay? <laughs> I love y'all, I appreciate y'all sticking with me through this journey. Um, I love Chasing Dallas, I love the Chasing Reality brand. Um, we love y'all and we appreciate y'all doing interviews things of that nature I already given out all that in the last um, review that I did for the fine season finale um, I'll, I'll go in more in depth with my thank yous and the things that I truly think of once we get to the final 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 
um, reunion. Okay? Be blessed, never stressed, guys. Um, 